Hello everyone, welcome back to ESA Summer Online! Uh, we, I'd like to remind you that we are raising money for the uh, Alzheimer Funden. If you would like to donate, make sure to check below the stream for the links. Uh, there you will be able to donate. Uh, also, big thanks to Kaspersky, Twitch and Fusonic for sponsoring this event. Without them, this event would not be possible. And now it's time for Lap Mackie running Alice in Wonder Dream. Take it away! Hello, everybody! My name is Lat Mackie, and we're going to be playing some Alice in Wonder Dream, or Fushigi no Yume no Alice, as it's uh, known in Japan. This game only came out for the PC Engine, the J Japanese version of the TurboGrafx-16. Uh, a couple of quick things to get over out of the way before we get into the run. Uh, first of all, awesome Mario block, but we're going to try and do, we're going to try and run one up and get a PB here. But uh, the PC Engine here actually has turbo switches built into the controller. So when anytime you see actual turbo happening on the screen that's totally allowed it's totally okay in fact it, it, we, we sometimes we take advantage of those because it's built into the console this is the uh, game we're going to be playing alice in wonder dream and you can see this is like this is what the cards look like they were kind of cool cards that built into the machine so uh this is a just a straightforward platformer with a lot of cool stuff that happens and i'll talk through it as we go along okay so let's get here comes the countdown here comes the countdown let's start this thing off in three two one, go! Okay, so um, there are a bunch of different worlds. The first one is the forest, and each world has uh, three or more stages depending on which world we're in. First one, obviously, here is the forest. And this is, you'll notice that the whole game kind of plays off this idea of Alice in Wonderland, even though it's uh, kind of a rough translation with Alice in Wonder Dream, because my guess is that they did not license this. <laughs> The intellectual property, if you will, uh, wherever you are. So we are going to be taking uh, quite a bit of damage. In fact, a lot of the strats that to go as fast as possible require you to take intentional damage. The current world record holder of this game and the person who's probably done the most amount of work in it is uh, Epic Neon Ninja Monkey. And uh, so a lot of the things he's actually kind of uncovered and we've kind of uncovered together. We're the only two people currently running it. So you actually have a weapon. So the way that I'm doing that weapon is I'm holding down what would be like the B button on the Nintendo. And you can charge it up to full power. And when you charge it up to full power, it actually does more damage. So you kind of see when I take on a boss like that, that I'm going to do, be doing a combination of jumping and using the weapon. The jump, jumping on top of enemies is actually the most powerful move you can do in the game. So we say, you know, we, to mix in jumping and uh, using the weapon actually does quite a bit of damage to the bosses. This, uh... There is actually some ladder tech in this game, which is, I know, kind of something weird to say. Oh, first things first. Folks, we're about to do a warp. This is really exciting. So this is the first time we just recently discovered some warps in this game. And I'm actually putting on the turbo switch here. So this is the first time we just discussed, like the any percent category is pretty brand new. It's only been around for a couple of months. Aquas, Aquas of all things, speedrunner extraordinaire Aquas discovered some warps randomly by pressing some buttons right there in that room. So... <laughs> There are two different warps, and there might actually be more. We just haven't discovered them quite yet. But that's the first one. Anyway, this is... The laddering in this game is kind of weird. Uh oh. Oh, well, we're going to have to take a death here. Best death animation in any single game is right there. But we're going to have to... The reason we have to take a death is because we need to be up there to do that properly. We're going to take another intentional damage here. My favorite thing about this game might actually be the death animation. So I'm glad we got one in just so you could actually see it. Oh, that was not on purpose. Okay, let's try this again. Can I do a quick donation? Please, great time to do it. All right, we got a $100 anonymous donation. Whoa. Thanks so much for that donation. Thank you. And we also, and we also got a $50 donation from Yohama saying, glad to see ESA going on. Hopefully the RNG will be in the runner's favor. Thanks Ooh. so much for those donations. And I appreciate the uh, RNG because we're going to need it in this game because there there, there's about to be a fair amount later on. One of the fun things about running this game actually is that... The, for the most part, a lot of the things happen in the same place. There are some RNG moments and spots, and I'll point them out as we get through and to them. This is, um, you know, the TurboGrafx-16 is kind of known for its, like, shooters and things like that, but it actually does have some really awesome platformers, and this is one of them. As a casual play, this can be a little bit of a challenging game as a casual playthrough. I think it took me, like, eight or nine hours to actually beat this one. But as a speedrun, it gets significantly easier, so... We're gonna do a quick health uh, grip. So one of the things this game has is actually some menuing and some spells. What I just did there is a discover spell and there's, there's, there's hidden health uh, pepper basically through every single level. 
And when I use the discover spell, it gives me an opportunity to see where the health is and then actually pick it up. You can't pick it out unless you have done the discover spell. So it may have a different name. Nobody that I'm aware of has done an English translation of this game. So, <laughs> so I'm just assuming the spell is called discover or something like that because it. what you do is when you use the spell, it actually reveals hidden things that are out. There's also, you can pick up magic and some other things. There is only a certain amount of magic you have and you can see that over on the bottom left, it, the little blue dots are my is my magic. And I can only use a certain amount of magic, which actually does come into play a little later on the run. So this is, we are in our, the waterfall stages. And this is just like straight up platforming. May even kind of look like Contra or a Mega Man, something like that. But it is, uh, it's straight up just platforming. Make all the jumps the best that you can. And... We're about to enter our boss. There's no warps in this. Oh, we need to get some help. There's no warps in the waterfall world. Uh, there will be another warp later on in the run. So you'll see me, once again, we're gonna be doing a combination of attacking and jumping on the enemy. You'll notice the uh, bosses are similar. There's one new boss in every world and then, one re and then the other two bosses are repeating. This one's the ghost. Uh, if you've got a more clever name, please feel free, shout it out. Ghost is kind of lame, so I'm totally down if, uh, if you've got a better name than Ghost. And we have more waterfall platforming here. And this is actually just kind of straight up, so if, you, if you've got any more donations, now's the time. Oops. I actually got a donation over here. Uh, oh, I got a five. I got a $5 donation from Sean saying, Greetings, Lat, from Planet Egar. I speak for everyone in the Lat fam when I say thank you for doing such a great thing by participating. Donation goes to naming Cup Fu Lat Mackie in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Because at least then you'll finally be into a, po into a Pokemon game. And a piece M and myself. By the way, this Wonderland mod for Golf Daisuke looks awesome. Oh, and I think Epic beat you in a race again. Crystal one? <laughs> I'm sure he did. Thank Sean, thank you so much for the donation, man. Appreciate it. Busting out the Egar memes. In case anybody's wondering what is Egar, that is just rage spelled backwards and it is uh, basically my go-to word. Okay, we actually don't need to health power up, so we're gonna go right into this boss. It's the, uh, so, we skipped over the this lizard boss in the stage that we warped from. So you haven't seen this one. This is the first time seeing the lizard here. And I'm gonna try not to get hit here. Okay, good, cool. And we will see the lizard one more time in the uh, next stage, or in the next world, I'm sorry. And we have our final uh, waterfall stage, which this one gets a little more technical, so I'm gonna try not to uh, die here as we go. But if I do die, you get the best animation of any like game I think I've ever played. It's still really my favorite uh, death animation. But it's more, uh, you know, it's more of the uh, the horizontal platforming it's one of the things I think I really enjoy about this game is, you know, as you get better, your time really starts to improve, which I know sounds like straightforward for a speed run, but you know, there's so many other games where, uh, you know, you can be punished by RNG and this game doesn't destroy you too badly like that. Oops, we're gonna wait for that to come again. Ooh, that was close. Okay, we're gonna wait. We're gonna be play this just a little bit safer. There we go. Okay, and now, I'm gonna let you decide. Is this a trumpet dog or is this a tuba dog? I don't know. We've kind of gone back and forth. Definitely not a trumpet, definitely not a trumpet, but maybe a tuba dog, I don't know. That's one of the bigger RNG spots, the way that, uh, I shouldn't say bigger. There is a little bit of RNG depending on my jumping and when I time it, so. Um, we are now gonna be moving into the next world with an actual warp. And this is, they call it the vegetables. Not sure what exactly that means, but. This has some of my favorite music in the entire game. And thankfully damage doesn't matter too much. We can take damage here because we are gonna be coming up to a warp. Well, you notice I just you jumped through those things. The nice thing about getting damage too is there's not any sort of, like you don't get hit back or anything like that. So the time, you don't get punished for hitting things. I'm doing turbo again here so I can reveal the warp door and we have just warped again. Maybe more warps in this game. We haven't dis discovered them yet, but those two were kind of game breaking. Those took off about a minute, <laughs> about half the run, so. And this would be uh, probably a pretty decent time if there's anything else you'd like to donate or anything like that. 
Uh, I'd like to, to uh, take this moment to mention that we still got a, quite a few donation incentives coming up. Like, I mean, the entire week is filled with donation incentives. But one I would like to mention is the for the Devil May Cry 5 run, uh, which is going to happen in a few hours, uh, for the false head cutscene. You'll see a cutscene where Dante gets his new weapon and the false head. And currently it's $175 out of 200. So we're almost there to meeting that incentive. So if you want to see that, we're almost there. You can do it. Awesome. And here's the lizard again. As you see the, the bosses again, you'll notice that they take more hits. They, they have more hit points and things like that. So you just have to do a bit more damage. And we beat the lizard. We're going to see our fi the, the another new boss in this stage, which is... Uh, what is he? It's like, it looks like the Little Red Riding Hood type of thing. I'm not sure. It's, it's a fox, I think. But uh, we'll see in just a second. So there is a, a mechanic in this game that is really challenging to get down. And you'll notice I still haven't... You know, I, I still feel like I sometimes screw it up. It's, um, and it's a super mega jump. And I'll show it here in just a second. There's a weird, like, I would say, I think it's like a three-frame window or something like that. Maybe it's a four-frame window where you can bounce off of an enemy with a super jump. That's just a regular jump. but And you actually need to, to beat the final boss with any sort of speed. So I'm going to take another health pick up here. Save some health there. Take another health pickup. This is uh, just helpful getting into this final event. But here is the, the the fox, the big bad wolf. Maybe it's the big bad wolf. Maybe that's what it's called. Epic figured out a really cool strat here. To, you're kind of, you're actually like jumping into uh, the big bad wolf's uh, hitbox. And so he doesn't hit you when you're doing that, which is like really cool. Okay, here's where the run really begins. <laughs> this is the toughest part. So we're on the last two worlds. And this is going to be the palace and then we'll hit up the Nightmare. And you'll see this is a lot of precise platforming. And uh, some of these jumps are very unforgiving. So hopefully we can get some luck here. So this is the jump spell. You saw me use this before. And this just... Oh, that's going to be a little bit too short. Oh, no. We actually made it in there. I thought I jumped a little too early. Okay, cool. Here the goal is going to be not to turn back. But everything basically is trying to get you, you know. And this looks like... it. Oh, man. You're heading towards the final boss. Not so much. We still have a little bit to go here. But we are going to pick up the health because... Oops. We're going to pick up some health to get through the... So we can get to the bo the final boss of this stage with uh, full health. We need full health to get through it with a little bit more accuracy. This is the invincible spell. So we just picked up the invincible spell. And this just makes it so you can actually go through all this stuff just a lot faster. There is a fifth spell that does this weird button thing that we have not found any use for in a casual or in a speed run. And I won't be showing it on purpose. If it does actually show up, it's completely by accident. We're gonna throw the invincibility back on there. We're gonna do one more invincible as we're getting over here. Oh no, okay, that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> Well, see, this is the problem. If you die here, you got to go a long ways back. It's one of those things where it's like, if you hesitate at all, this stage is super punishing. So in case you missed it the first time, here it is again. The nice thing is we don't have to get the health drop this time. And we're going to be using the invincible here. Save us a little bit of time. And because of the way that magic works out. We're probably going to be skipping it on the next one. Hmm. Oh, man. Okay. Well, we're going to keep this close. We're going to make this interesting, folks. That was very good. Okay. Cool. We did it. Okay. We're good. Okay, we just, that's, that's way better. I can stop sweating. That's the toughest part of the whole, uh, of the entire run, to be honest with you. This is like, I don't know what this guy is. He's like, a, I don't know, a king of some sort, maybe Burger King. I don't even know. He does a thing. And he just takes a couple jumps and you get through him. 
but you do need full health because the way that those balls drop is completely random and it can totally destroy your run if you're not there with full health. Very tough to beat if you only have three health, so. And now we're on to the nightmare. This part is just as kind of technical as some of the other stuff. However, comma, it offers us some forgiveness as far as dying here actually loses less time. So we're gonna take a little bit safe here. Okay. Ooh, that was a good one. So you notice that yellow book now shows up as a new spell? Yeah, still never used it. Don't really know what it does. Probably should give it a cool name, but uh. Okay, and we're on to the home stretch, folks. We're about to head into the final boss who has two phases. And I'm gonna just do completely just total damage. This is the fastest way to do this, just run through. Interestingly enough, as far like as a speed run goes, the fastest thing to do is run. Even jumping, you lose you lose frames when you jump. So the fastest way to get through anything is to actually just run through it. There's gonna be two phases here, five hits for each uh, phase. And this is the first one and it's like a Medusa thing. I, I don't know. Maybe, was there ever a Medusa in Alice in Wonderland? I don't know. At some point I should probably read that book, but uh, or I guess I could watch a movie with it maybe. Yeah, you know. I did see the one with Johnny Depp. That wasn't bad, actually. Okay. Almost have five hits here. This will be the last hit. And now we're on. We're going to get close to time. Time is coming up, so I'll give you a heads up there. After five hits. Oops. So you'll notice... Oh, jeez. I'm not getting it. Okay, that's the super jump. There is literally like a three to four frame window to actually get that jump. You have to press jump again. And it's uh, it's not easy to, to learn. It's taken me quite a bit of time. Okay. And here we go. Time is coming up. We have time right about time. Okay, there we go. Woo. Oh my gosh, we made it. Well, did we get enough uh, death animations with Alice? Because that's the whole point to run this game is so you can see Alice just flip off the screen like a crazy person. But uh, this is Alice in Wonder Dream. Uh, a couple of things really quick. Um, if you're at all interested in the TurboGrafx-16 or the PC engine, we do have a Discord available. Um, and it's a bunch of, it's, it's mostly speedrunners, but we've actually kind of branched out recently and we're welcoming everybody. Please come join us if you're at all interested about the console. There is a wonderful library. It's not just shooters on the TurboGrafx-16. And you can get them on the virtual console. There's the new TurboGrafx-16 Mini, if that's your thing, and PC Engine Mini uh, that has access to all of these great games that uh you know you may not be familiar with there's a great library out there of games especially in the pc engine you know we they got so many more games than we did in the states so um thanks for uh, having me i just want to say esa thank you so much for having me back it's really a privilege and an honor and folks thank you so much for donating to a such a wonderful cause i've worked in uh the alzheimer's space and the more money we have the more research we can do so it's it's hugely uh thank you to all of those who have made donations already and who continue to donate uh, and being so uh, hospitable we really do appreciate it that is Allison Wonder Dream. My name's Vlad Mackey. Thank you so much for having me and enjoy the rest of the marathon. Woohoo!